Let's get started this morning. Good morning, friends. How are we doing today? My name is Kim. I am a community learning specialist with Do Space, and we are doing Little's Lab this morning. So welcome to Little's Lab. Um, if you are new to Little's Lab, uh, it is a program we put on every Tuesday and Saturday morning at 930. And we uh, have a different theme every month and we kind of do different activities and uh, do a story time and we are featuring an app that kind of based around the uh, theme. And so our theme this month is we are exploring our world. We're learning how different to do different things to learn about our world and exploring it. So my question for our friends that are here with us today, what do you do to explore your world? And that can be anything, right? Maybe it's, you know, learning about our entire planet that we live on, learning about different countries, which is a lot, different places on our earth. Sometimes it's just as simple as hanging out in our backyard, looking at different plants, different trees, maybe going on a hike, maybe going to the park, just learning about, you know, things that is in your world, you know, in your, what's in your, what you experience every day. And so what do you like to do? So we have a friend Roy and he says he likes to climb mountains. That's awesome. I also like to climb mountains, Roy. I love to hike. Our friend Paul says he loves to play games. That's great. That's a great way to learn, right? Yeah, playing games. We talked about that last month. Um, we did a lot of different game playing, so that's awesome. And uh, yeah, what else? Sometimes, I mean, I like to go to the park. Sometimes it, you can see some fun animals, right? Um, in the neighborhood that I live in, sometimes we see some deer and some turkeys. I love it when I see the turkeys. Those turkeys are so funny. Um, and maybe, and we see a lot of squirrels. Um, and sometimes it's just fun seeing, you know, experiencing those, those little things, right? And so, ooh, our friend Byron says he likes to explore through listening to things. That's such a great, yeah, that's a great way. Um, so yeah, so exploring by listening, you know, oh, it's springtime the birds are out. So it's fun to like listen to the different birds and figure out, are those the same birds? Are they different birds? Which birds, um, you know, do different, you make different noises, sing different songs. And so that's exploring your world. That's learning. And, uh, maybe trying to identify, trying to look and see where, which bird is making those calls or singing those songs. Um, and so, which is kind of fun. Absolutely. So there's so many different ways to explore our world, right? There are so many different ways. So if you think about it, um, there's something that you um, want to shout out, put in our chat, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll read it aloud. So um, perfect. Well, so I'm seeing a lot of new uh, friends' names in our chat, which or is our participant names, which is great. So because of that, I'm going to kind of explain how we do things with our, our digital webinar. Um, and so we, I like to start out with our calendar. So I think our calendar is such a great way to help us with our numbers and our days of the week and just things going on in our month and even our letters. And then we are going to be reading a story called Rainforest One Two Three, uh, Rainforest Colors One Two Three, I believe. And so we are going to be talking about the rainforest a little bit. And then we are going to be—I'm going to be featuring an app called Tiny Bop, uh, Tiny Bop Earth. And so it's kind of an interactive one where I'm going to be controlling it, but I'm going to be telling you what I do uh, because I'm coming to you from my iPad right now. So let's get started. Let's get started. And so I am going to share with you a website and it's called Starfall. And I really like Starfall because it is a really great website that has a lot of free activities um, for all different ages and that kind of cover all different things. And so I'm gonna go to the kindergarten one. 
And I'm going to go to, if you look on the right hand side, you'll see we have a little calendar. So I'm going to go to the calendar. And so if we were at Do Space, if we were in the building doing Little's Lab Do Space, we have a great big touch monitor that I would have our kiddos come up and help kind of move along this, um, uh, move along this website. But because I'm here and you're at home, I'm going to have you pretend. I'm going to have you pretend that um, you're helping me along. And so uh, I'm going to ask you to maybe touch your screen. And I'm actually going to be controlling it, but you are going to be pretending that you're helping me. So we're going to do a little bit of pretend play. So for example, you should see a big white triangle in the middle of your screen. Can you guys go ahead and touch that triangle? Go ahead and touch that triangle. Perfect. So you should see our month, the name of our month and the name of our year. And that first word is our month. And so what is the very first letter of our month? What do you think that very first letter is that in the name of our month? What is that very first letter? Anybody know? Oh, we have a friend that says it's the letter M. That is right. It is M, 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 M. And so does anybody know what our uh, month is called that starts with our letter M, 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 M? Yep, our friend Roy said it's M, makes our M sound. What month makes that M sound that we are in? Does anybody know it is our month of May? That is right. It is our month of M -m -m May. So we are in the month of May and we are in the year 2020-2020. And so I'm going to have you go ahead and touch that green arrow. You see that green arrow on the bottom corner? Go ahead and touch that green arrow for us. And so this is our month of May and I want us to go ahead and there are seven days of the week, right? That we repeat every week and every month throughout the year. We have seven of them. Let's say those seven days of the week all together. So you say them with the grown up or with your family that you're with. I'm going to say them with you. So let's say them all together and let's start with Sunday. So there's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And so, yeah, so those are our seven days of the week. And who knows what our day of the week is today? What's our day of the week today? And so, does anybody know our day of the week today? It is our month, or our day of the week is Tuesday. That is right. T -t 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 Tuesday comes after Monday and before Wednesday. So, can you guys go ahead, go ahead and touch that Tuesday for us? It's golden. You should, there's a little hand pointing out on it. Let's go ahead and touch that Tuesday. So yeah, so today is Tuesday. That's our day of the week. Our month is called May. And we are on, the, the number is our date today. And it is, I bet everybody knows that number. Our number is our number five, right? Yes, it is our number Five, good job, Byron. It is our number five, and it is the 5th of May. Today is the 5th of May. So, and so we let's go ahead and touch that green arrow again. Let's touch that green arrow. And you know it's the 5th of May because it has a big purple star on it. Let's touch that green arrow in the bottom corner. Okay, now I really need your help because I we need to put... You can see on the right-hand side there, we have our day of the week, our Tuesday, and our date today, the 5th. And we need to put them back in the right spots in their calendar. So guys, can you guys go ahead and help me? Let's go ahead and let's put our drag and drop our Tuesday where it needs to go. It goes right up there. Good job, friends. And then how about, can you guys help me put that number five where it needs to go? It needs to go right there. Perfect. Um, and so go ahead and touch that green arrow for us again. Um, perfect. And so this is our uh, this is our month of May. And you can see that there are some 
uh, icons on our, their little pictures on our certain days of our month. And those little pictures are like special days or holidays or different things that are going on in our month of May. And one is a little bit hidden behind our purple star. So you can see our purple star on the on our date today, but then you can kind of see there's a little picture behind it. And if you saw that, it's a sombrero. And that is because today is a holiday called Cinco de Mayo. That is right. And Cinco de Mayo means 5th of May or um, in Spanish. So Cinco is five in Spanish. And de Mayo means of May. So Mayo is May, it's our month. And de, so 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo. So today we might, there are people in, um, there are people that celebrate this in the country of Mexico. And there are people in the United States that celebrate Cinco de Mayo. So, and a lot of times, if we weren't in the situation we were in right now, there is a big festival in South Omaha um, that has a all week, or at least all weekend, there's a big Cinco de Mayo festival. And um, there's dancing and food and vendors and all sorts of great things. Oh, we have a friend that said that their Nana is Mexican. That's great, yeah, it is a Mexican holiday. So yeah, um, and so we might, so if we were, if we didn't have to stay home, I bet there would be people going to that Cinco de Mayo festival that goes on. Do Space usually goes, we usually have a booth and talk about what we do at Do Space, um, but then it's so cool to see all the dancing and the music and just ex experience. Um, maybe a culture that's a little bit different than our everyday culture, a culture that is celebrated and, um, you know, that you can see somewhere else in our world. So that's really great. So maybe, um, maybe you're doing something special for Cinco de Mayo. Maybe not, and that's okay, but maybe you are. What are you doing if you are? Okay, and then on Sunday, May 10th, we have a very special day for a very special someone in our lives. So. We have on Sunday, May 10th, is Mother's Day. Um, and so that is a day that we celebrate moms or special folk, special people in our life um, that are so special to us, right? And you know, sometimes, you know, it absolutely can be our moms, but it doesn't have to be just our moms. It could be any special lady, special woman in our life, our grandmas, grandpas. Um, it could be, uh, you know, aunties. I said grandpas. That could be celebrated on Father's Day. But grandmas, nanas, uh, aunties, any other special people. It doesn't have to be just moms. But if you're celebrating that day, um, maybe it's a great time to... Uh, to maybe, maybe they can pick some flowers, make a special card. Homemade cards are so great. It's a great time to just t tell that special lady in your life um, how much you love her, right? And how special you are. Okay, our next holiday is on Monday, May 18th. And so it is called Victoria Day. And to be honest, it's a holiday that is celebrated not in our country in the United States, but celebrated in a country um, that is north of us called Canada. And because I, we are not Canadian, and I'm not Canadian, I'm not exactly sure. And I keep meaning to look up what Canada or what Victoria Day is. Um, and I'm not quite sure. I'm assuming it's a day to celebrate a queen of England that was called, her name was called Victoria, Queen Victoria. She lived in the 1800s, and so um, that, but that might be a good thing to explore today. That might be something you can um, explore, and maybe with your grown-ups, look it up, do a little research. What is Victoria Day in Canada, and how do people celebrate that in Canada? Or maybe somebody in our uh, our attendees in Canadian, let us know <laughs> what can uh, what Victoria Day is. And then another day um, is on Monday, May 25th, and that is Memorial Day. And that is a day for us to remember uh, people who maybe have passed 
who are special to us. So a lot of times we celebrate people who were who served in the military, but it doesn't have to be just people in the military. It could be anybody who has maybe passed, and we just want to remember them and think of them. So that's on on Monday, May twenty fifth. Uh, so yeah, so I know that everybody has a birthday, right? You have a birthday, I have a birthday, we all have birthdays. I'm wondering that if anybody in our, who is here has a birthday in our month of May. Does anybody have a birthday in our month of May? Um, anybody have a birthday? And if you don't, that's okay. And if you don't, I'm not seeing, oh, not seeing anybody with a month of May. That is okay. No May birthday, birthdays. I don't have a birthday in the month of May either. So maybe we'll just put a piece of cake on our date today as well. Because we'll pretend that's like a dulce de leche cake that for, um, for Cinco de Mayo. So Perfect. Okay, friends. So we are going to uh, we uh, we are going to move on, and we are going to read our stories. So I'm going to change, and I'm going to try and not put my hand in front of the camera. We're going to stop sharing. We're going to share a an app. My app is called Epic Books, and it is a great app to help with has a lot of stories and all sorts of things. Down in the Jungle, not Rainbow Colors. It's called Down in the Jungle. I was confused whenever I, um, uh, whenever I was telling you the name of the story. So let us get started. This is called Down in the Jungle, one, two, three, a rainforest counting book. So here's my question to you. This is a rainforest counting book. So we're gonna be talking about animals and plants in the rainforest. And so what is a rainforest? What do you guys think a rainforest is? Um, yeah, so a rainforest is, it's basically a place with lots of trees, right? Like, like if we think about the name, rainforest. It's a forest, so forest has lots of trees. It's really humid, that's right, humid, so it has a lot of moisture or water in the air. And there's a lot of rain, a lot of rain, and it's hot. And it is, a, a lot of times our rainforests are, are along right in the middle of our earth. So a lot of times, so we are, they're right around a place on our earth called the equator. And basically that's a line that goes all, if you were to take, if you think of it like a, if you take a, like a basketball and you took a piece of string, and you put like from left to right, if you place a piece of string around right the middle of our, that basketball, that would be like the equator on our earth. And around our equator is where it's the warmest, the sun shines the most, and we don't get a lot of seasons there. So a lot of times it's hot and humid and rainy all year long. Not like Nebraska, right? So like in Nebraska, we have our four seasons, it gets obviously hot, it gets obviously cold. Right now we're in our season of spring, but around the equator, it is basically all the time really hot and rainy. So a lot of animals live there, a lot of plants live there, and a lot of times there are plants and animals that we haven't even discovered yet, which is pretty cool. So, but, so let's get started. We are going to read, uh, we're gonna practice our counting. Um, and so we are going to practice our counting, and so let's get started. So the jungle is full of plants and animals. Let's see how many we can count. Um, so, and what is that little animal? What do you see? What do you see that little animal? Is it like a little gecko? It is a little gecko. So let's see our next. Ooh, and what is this animal? Is this a jaguar? Yeah, it is a jaguar. And there's only one of them. It is our one jaguar. One jaguar hunts and jaguars hunt and they live alone. So yeah, that is our one jaguar. It's so pretty with the spots, right? They help the jag, those spots help the jaguar blend in in the trees. What's our next number, friends? What's our next number? Is our number two? Yeah, there are 
two birds or two parrots eat nuts. They crack open their beaks. They crack them open with their beaks. That is right. So these, these parrots crack open their nuts with their beaks. We have our two parrots. Let's see what our next animal is. It, what is this animal? Do you guys know what this animal is? This is a sloth. These are sloths and based off of their um, their fingers or their claws, it looks like they are three-toed sloths. And so, but which is good because there are three sloths. That's our next number. Three sloths hang from trees. They spend most of their time of their lives in the trees. They rarely come down from the out from above in their trees because they don't, because that's where some predators are. They don't want to get gobbled up. So they hang out in the trees. <gasps> Ooh, what's our next number, friends? Is our next number four? That is right. Our next number is our number four. Uh, and we have four what? These are four green snakes that coil around trees. They hold on with their tails. So yeah, these are four snakes. Do you guys like snakes? I love snakes. I think they are such cool animals. And they are green, so they blend in with the leaves of the trees that they live in. <gasps> What's our next number, friends? Is our next number five? Our next number is five. And we have five what? Five little monkeys or five marmosets. I think that's how you pronounce it, marmosets. And they sit on a log. They are the smallest monkey in the world. These little marmosets are the smallest monkeys in the world. Don't they look small and cute? It would be cool to have a monkey, right? Oh, what's our next number, friends? It's our next number, our number six. Our next number is our number six, and we have six what, friends? We have six butterflies. There are six morpho butterflies that fly by. They are the one of the biggest kinds of butterflies. So. They look really big, right? These look like really large, beautiful butterflies. What's our next friend number, friends? It's our next number, our number seven. Yeah, our next number is our number seven. And there are seven orchid plants that grow. They grow in every color but black. Look at these beautiful orchids that they grow in the rainforest. Um, they grow naturally there, but you may have one, or maybe your grown-up mom or dad may have an orchid plant in their in your guys' house. A lot of times people grow them in their house as well, but they grow naturally in the rainforest. What's our next number, friends? Is it our number eight? That's right, our number eight. And what is there eight of? There are eight large bats that fly by. They are called flying foxes, and they are the largest bats in the world. Look at those bats. They are the biggest bats, and they are so important to our world because bats eat a lot of mosquitoes and other flying bugs. And so, and you, I don't know about you, but I really do not like mosquitoes. So I like that there are bats that eat up those mosquitoes so they don't eat on me. What's our next number, friends? It's our next number, our number nine. Our next number is our number nine. That's right. And there are nine red-eyed tree frogs that watch. Their red eyes scare larger animals away. Yeah, look at those. I mean, they are so bright green. But I think if I saw some big red eyes staring back at me in a dark rainforest, I think I'd be scared too. What's our last number, friends? Is our last number our number 10? That is right, it's our number 10. And we pick 10 pineapples. What else can you count in the rainforest? Is there anything else you can think about that you, you can count in the rainforest? What else? There are so many things, right? There are so many things to count in the rainforest. It's hard to keep track. And like I said, there are even plants and animals that we have never even discovered in some of our rainforests. 
So maybe talk, you know, maybe there are some things that you want to explore in the rainforest. Maybe you can look some of that stuff up with your grownups. Perfect. Okay, friends, we are going to, um, that is the end of our book. That is the end of our book. So we are going to move on to our app today. And I'm going to actually go back to the home because I want everybody to see this is our app. And our app that we are featuring today is called Tiny Bop the Earth. And it is a really cool interactive um, app that features all sorts of different, one, um, different subjects. And this one is specifically kind of about our earth. So let's take a look. I'm gonna press that play button. And so if you look, this is our earth that we are living. You can kind of see, you can see Africa, the continent of Africa, and you can see the continent of Europe, and you can see the continent of South America. And you can kind of see parts of North America. And then you can see all like the space and if you there you should see like a white bar on the right hand side i'm going to move that white bar and i'm going to move it so we can see what the our earth what the inside of our earth looks like and this is what our inside of our earth looks like so if you were to maybe take if you were to cut our earth open like you were to cut up an orange like cut it in half and you can see a cross section that is kind of what this looked like if you were to cut our earth. So you can see all around the outside of our earth is called the crust. And it's kind of like the crust of a piece of, a piece of bread, right? Our, there's a, our pieces of bread have a crust all the way around it, and so does our earth. And that's like the land that we stand on, right? Anywhere there's land, there is our crust. And then there's some, uh, an, an area called the upper mantle that's right under the crust and then the lower mantle, and then the outer core, and the inner core. And once you start getting into the, like, into the upper and lower mantles and inner core, that's where all that really hot lava and magma is. And so that's what comes out when we, when there are volcanoes that erupt. And we're going to kind of see how that works with this app. So that's why it'd be really hard to dig all the way down because eventually you would get into some magma and it would get too hot and your shovel would melt and you don't want to, we don't want our shovels to melt, right? So let's take a look at our earth. So I'm actually, I'm going to go over to where our ocean is. So you can see that there's all sorts of different types of earth that we and I'm going to play with this one. So this is, so if I'm gonna actually go back really quickly. So you can see this, we're in the ocean. And you can see a tiny, it's like a tiny little volcano in the ocean. So I'm gonna just touch that little circle that shows a tiny little uh, volcano. And this is called a hot spot volcano. And you can see that at the very top is a vent where the magma comes up. And then there's the volcano. And you can see that crust where our earth is. And underneath that is our magma. So I'm going to touch that magma. I'm going to touch it a lot. And look what happens. Oh my gosh. Our little volcano is erupting. And gas is coming out. And lava is coming out. And there's... When it touches that, when that magma touches that really cold, cold ocean water, it turns to rock. And that rock is called igneous rock. So I am just going to keep building this volcano up because eventually, what do you think will eventually happen? If our volcano in the ocean gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's going to happen, friends? That's right. What do you think that line is? That's our water. <gasps> what happens? What do you think is going to get made? What is going to get made if we, our volcano gets big enough and it goes above the water line? Let's see. Oh, it's getting so big. It's getting so big. Let's see what will ma be made. <gasps> now the gas is going away. And a volcanic island is made. So if you ever heard of the state of Hawaii, 
It is made up of lots of several different islands. And those islands were all made by volcanoes underneath the ocean, just like we did. So they're all volcanic islands. Now this is just a teeny tiny one, but, uh, and it takes a long time, millions and millions of years sometimes for those volcanic islands to be made. But that's exactly how they're made. Uh, lava comes up and it cools down by the ocean water and eventually breaks the surface of the water and an island is made. How cool is that? So now you can see our tiny little volcanic uh, hotspot volcano turned into a big island, right? It sure did. We're gonna see what else the water can do. So I'm gonna click, you can kind of see a little cliff and we're gonna see what happens with, with what water can do. Because water is such a powerful thing on our earth, right? Um, it can do a lot. It's so good for like our plants and for us to drink, but like ocean water, it can do a lot of damage and it can even break up some rocks. So we're going to see how that happens. So this is called sedimentary rock and I'm going to be making some waves with my water. So you see, I'm making some waves with my water. And these waves are eventually breaking down our cliff. Because our sedimentary rock has a lot of holes called their porous. Oh, and then it's all gone. And so because they have a lot of holes in them, it's easy for water to get in and it's easy for that rock to crumble. So that is how water can break up different pieces of rock. And we're going to look at, we're, because I think the volcanoes are really cool, we're going to see how, what all the different kind of volcanoes. We're going to look at some of the volcanoes. So this is called, this is another volcano like that isn't in the ocean. And it's very similar to our hotspot one, right? And so there are different kinds. So I'm going to change it this one. And it looks like this is called a plug dome. But maybe if I change it so it's taller and it has a smaller hole, it's called a stratovolcano. And then maybe I'm gonna change it so it's a little bit lower. It's called a cinder cone volcano. So there's all different ways, there are all different types of volcanoes depending on how high they are and how big the hole is, but they usually do the same thing like our hot spot. So if we build up that magma, woo, you can see that it makes a big eruption, right? So there's lava that comes out and gas and ash. It comes up through that vent, through the crust, that magma comes up, Oh, it did kind of shaky, right? Because a lot of times, sometimes our volcanic eruptions are so strong, they could shake the earth too. So friends, we are, we are just about out of time. So I am going to actually go back to my Zoom so you guys can see me. And yeah, so friends, thank you so much for joining me for Little's Lab today. Um, if you're interested again, I will type out um, that our app today was called Tiny Bop. Tiny Bop Earth. So there are all sorts of um, different apps that we are actually gonna feature for Little's Lab that are Tiny Bop apps because they're really great to help us learn about our Earth. So yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. Our next one is going to be on Saturday and we're um, Saturday at 930 and we're going to have a whole a brand new app and a brand new story to read. So I hope you guys can join us then. So I hope you guys have a day, good day. Go out and explore your world. See if there's something new about your world, even if it's just something in your backyard that you can um, learn. So hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye.